and welcome to another episode of the Fully Charged Show coming to you from a beautiful sunny park in the middle of Eindhoven in the Netherlands. And I've come here to unwind and relax and try and get a bit of me time. And I thought I'd do a bit of camping. Now I have heard that you can camp in the back of a car. I can't imagine anything worse. You know, really cramped and small, especially if you're a very tall person. However, I've chosen a slightly more upmarket option, a bit more luxury, a bit more space, a bit more, you know, je ne sais quoi because that is a solar-powered camper van, and this is the Fully Charged Show. It's time. Fully Charged Live Europe, the world's number one electric vehicle and clean energy show, sponsored by Mobility Service, arrives at the Rye in Amsterdam on the 20th, 21st, and 22nd of May. Get your tickets today. So guys, Tain and Stain, it's so good of you to spend time with us today and let us have a look around your fantastic camper. This is just, I absolutely love this machine. I wish there were hundreds of them and I could buy one. What, so what's it called? You've, it's got a name. Yeah, it's called Stella Vita. Uh, Stella Vita. It actually stands for Vita, uh, which means life. And of course, you can live in this vehicle on the energy of the sun. It's not just been driven around a park in the Netherlands, has it? It's done a bit of a journey. Yes, yes, we've made a, a quite a big journey. Uh, last September, uh, the vehicle was finished. Uh, we presented it to the world and then it was time to, to test it, but also show it to yeah, the rest of Europe and inspire uh, the other people. Right. So we drove all the way from Eindhoven uh, towards the most southern point of Europe, Tarifa. Uh, it's located in Spain and we made a trip of uh, 3000 kilometers. So th because I think what's hard to un for people to understand is that it is possible to do, you could do that without ever plugging this vehicle in. You could just charge it from the solar on the roof. You did plug it in once or twice, I, I, I think. Yes, we had, we had a slight problem in the beginning, so we couldn't drive. That's why we had to take uh, yeah, a lot of test labs in uh, Paris, right. which of course costs a lot of energy. So that's why we charged in Paris and in Bordeaux, the, yeah, the weather was not that good as well. Right. So we uh, charged twice uh, and then we went on to, uh, to Spain and uh, yeah, the weather was perfect. Right. So normally it would take up to two or three days to fully charge this vehicle yeah. and then you have a battery of 600 kilometers to go. That's so, crazy. That I mean, that's crazy. Our vehicle is mostly focused on efficiency, while another, yeah, a lot of other vehicles focus more on performance as well. Your 0 to 60, 0 to 100k yeah, is not 60 impressive. Isn't <laughs> impressive, um, but basically the battery is about the same size as a small Tesla Model 3, yeah. about the same size. Um, but it's got 600 kilometers range, even though it's a lot bigger of a vehicle. Yeah. Um, but that's because yeah, the focus is there is just mainly on um, efficiency, so aerodynamics, uh, the drivetrain as well, um, all those kinds of things to make sure it is yeah as efficient as possible. So from Bordeaux to the south of Spain, you didn't need to plug it in to charge it. You, you did it all on the solar. Yeah, I mean, when, when you're standing still, you expand the roof and all the, the other solar panels. There's yeah. like lots of solar energy that you can absorb. So that's why we have a lot of kilometers to drive. So what an amazing transformation. Once the roof's up, it becomes this really spacious internal space. Look at the bed, it's so gorgeous. Imagine waking up there on your holidays, knowing that your, your vehicle's gonna be charged in the daytime. So here we've got a sink unit. Uh, under this, this is a fridge. That's a little fridge in there. So where you keep all your crisp, your crisp salads. <laughs> and uh, there's, the, there's the, the little pump pumping there. This I really love, these are induction hobs and they fit in these little containers here. And they're electric induction hobs, but of course, can run off the electricity. You're not gonna run out of electricity. So Benny, I mean, I am completely blown away by this, by what you've achieved. You've really built this from the ground up. There was, this isn't a converted existing yes. vehicle. Nearly everything that is in here is completely designed from the ground up, completely proprietary. 
uh, especially because there's no vehicles, that I'm, so far as I'm aware, that has this shape. Yes, no, absolutely. Um, and there's this, there are three key elements that we do take into account when designing our, our service vehicles. And um, I believe the, the paradigms really are, it says it needs to be aerodynamic, yeah. uh, lightweight, uh, and the solar panels, of course. Yeah. And with that, you can create extremely efficient vehicles that actually take advantage of the solar panels. You know, you don't need to be completely reliant on the grid. A lot of people have got solar on their roofs, so they all kind of vaguely know, and the, the average in the UK is between four and five kilowatts. So I'm wondering what this can produce. Peak is up to two kilowatts. Right. Um, and when it's completely extended and you have actually extended also the panels outwards, it's kind of up to four kilowatts. But then that makes sense then. So yeah, four kilowatts for a long sunny day, yeah. you're producing quite a lot of electricity. You know, a 60 kilowatt hour battery is big, but it's a very big vehicle. Yes, uh, that was one definitely one of the main ways this car was designed, aerodynamics and efficiency. And obviously it's anything but a small car, yeah. um, but you can still get range up to, up to basically the top level. Uh, it's incredible, yeah. Electric vehicles you have today. The roof itself has got almost up to 10 square meters of uh, solar panels. When it is completely folded out, it takes about three days in a sunny day to completely charge your battery. Right. So with, with, one, with just one day, you could drive another 200 kilometers an hour. So the range uh, with full battery is basically 600 kilometers. And you actually managed to do that? You were achieving those sort of distances? So it depends on, on how basically the, the terrain is. So yeah, of course. Sometimes, yeah. for example, in the north of Spain, there was, yeah, there was a lot of mountains, some, some so mountains, then it yeah. got a little worse. But then the other thing is the, the, the efficiency of it is just remarkable, how far it goes on. Because well, you've got a 60 kilowatt hour battery, is that right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. But it's, it, that goes further than, a, you know, an amazing fuel efficiency for such a huge, it's a big vehicle. Yeah. But also everything is really lightweight. So for example, the kitchen that you look at, yeah. everything that you touch is light. And that's why you consume less energy while driving uh, in Stella Vita. It looks bigger and heavier than a regular electric car. But with, yeah. would have, wouldn't be, but those cars wouldn't be able to go that far on the same size battery. So and, you, and that's because it isn't because this uh, car weighs about 1,700 kilograms. So basically, wow. that's similar to a station wagon. Yeah. And it's actually quite a bit lighter than the average electric car. For example, um, Model Three, it's about 1,800, 1,900 kilograms or yeah, something. Yeah. yeah. So you've gone for the absolute pinnacle of sort of super efficiency, light, yeah. super lightweight stuff. Yeah. But I mean, it's still got you know, it's got a crash cage around the passenger and the driver. Yeah. You know, it's not like you've done, it's, this is road legal, isn't it? You yeah, yeah, we have a license plate. I mean, we want yeah. to drive it all the way to Spain and we want to show the people that this is not just a dream. I mean, right. we can really, yeah, we can really make this kind of vehicles and now it's time to really produce it. I mean, the yeah. technology is here. Yeah. Now we have to take action and really do it. Is this is this actually feels really comfortable because often in like, experimental vehicles like this, you know, the driving position is agony and really uncomfortable. This is actually this is really nice because it's quite roomy, really clever little design feature. So it doesn't have wing mirrors; it has two cameras that look you, you've got either side there, which are in a good position. They're kind of far enough away; they feel like mirrors. That works. They're not too near you, which is always feels weird. Very basic controls, but a lovely big screen here that I just thought, oh, they built a screen in like a like an iPad screen. But no, it slides out. So then you can have a telly, and this is showing you your energy use, what you're getting from the solar panels, what you're getting from, uh, what, how much energy you use, how, what range you've got, uh, how your driving's been, it's re I mean, re and really nice, clear, clear software. And you can also take it in the back and have it as your telly. And of course, it links to your home entertainment system, which you can put in the back. But there's a big hole there, so that holds that securely while you're driving along. You've got your, you can listen to beautiful west coast rock as you cruise along in your solar powered camper but you know they've driven this a hell of a long way already it is an experimental vehicle it's being developed all the time they're testing all sorts of things but on the on the basic level of its competence it's it's right up there It's a very, I can sort of see it's a sort of almost teardrop shape. So that's presumably all to do with aerodynamics. That's exactly, yeah. Aerodynamics was definitely one of the key elements that we took into account for the design. But the rest is almost completely new. And one of the things that we, when we designed this, this car, this, this shape does 
make you think differently about packaging the car, especially in the, re in the rear. This is one of the few things we had to take into account. For example, we wanted to make it as lightweight as possible, so the exterior is completely made out of um, a combination of carbon fiber and glass fiber. I suppose when you're driving, if you're driving in Spain, for instance, and it's really sunny, then even when you're driving, that's still producing electricity when you're... Exactly, and especially on, uh, on a highway situation with little high rise or anything like that, no yeah. shadow to cover up your solar panels, you can actually uh, still win back quite a bit. Yeah. That's also part of the thing, is that the entire thing is also designed to just take people back, yeah. take it easy and uh, enjoy the experience, and you can do that somewhat independently, almost completely independently of any infrastructure that's already there. Right. But I mean, you have got incredible facilities here. I mean, this institution is truly remarkable. Yeah, we can definitely shout out uh, the Brainpools Industry Campus here that we were allowed to, to work here. So was the vehicle built in this room, effectively? Actually, it was built right. here. Yeah, so uh, we contacted them and we were lucky enough to get our facilities here because the university, uh, where our previous teams largely worked, yeah. there was not enough space. This, yeah. this was just too big of a project. I mean, it must have been an amazing moment when you first when it first moved under its own steam. Oh, definitely. The <laughs> reaction of people has been amazing. I mean, I'd find this, uh, in some ways, more exciting than the cars. Because I think just by sheer dint of size, cars are restricted in what they can generate. And I'm sure I'm wrong, and I'm sure I'll be corrected, and the technology is moving on. But there's something, and it's been my dream for years to do long drives only powered by solar. And, you know, you, I've always em envisaged converting an existing vehicle with lots of solar panels that you spring out yeah, on the roof. Yeah, yeah. But this is just amazing. It just does it. <laughs> Can I buy it? <laughs> um, depends. Uh, I think it will cost a pretty penny. I um. think it probably would. It might be slightly <laughs> out of my budget. And when you but finally arrived in the south of Spain. That must have been an amazing moment to have achieved that. Yes, it was. I mean, we have worked so hard with this team and then finally getting there and achieving yeah. our goal uh, and showing the people or the world that it's possible to do this. Right. I mean, that's so great. Yeah. Our, our greatest mission was achieved and our goal, so. Right. Yeah. But I'm just thinking there, there must have been amazing times when you stopped. Yeah. I mean, I've seen it here today in the park. I mean, people, <laughs> yeah. you know, we, we walk away from the thing and suddenly there's 14 people having a look inside. I mean, that yeah. just attracts people, doesn't it? It's extraordinary. Yeah, it was funny, the first time that we were camping in Brussels, I mean, it, it was our first stop, right. and we expanded the roof, and like, all the campsite was yeah. coming to right. Stella Vita, and what's this? I mean, and it was our first impression, or the first impression right. of other people encountering this vehicle, yeah. so, I mean, that was so great to see. Fantastic. Now, well, I mean, I think you've, you've proven the point that the technology is, works, it's ready there. I'm just hoping that some big commercial company that builds camper vans goes, I think we should do what they did and, and, and gives you money and pays you to help them develop it. Yes, of course. And if people would like to know anything about it, of course, we would like to help them as well. And it's not all, only about this vehicle, but it's the way of thinking. Yeah. I mean, the aerodynamics, the efficiency. Yeah, it's time to implement these kind of ideas in other vehicles as well. So that would be really great if other companies did this. Yeah, absolutely right. And that was a real treat. I think we were really lucky to see this amazing machine. What an incredible achievement. Really, really young team of incredible uh, engineering students from Eindhoven University. I mean, they, they've got an imp impressive track record. They always win the solar challenge in Australia, which is where they drive a solar power car, nothing else, just the sun, from Darwin in the north of Australia to Adelaide in the south. Thousands and thousands of kilometers across the desert. Amazing achievement. And this team have done this incredible thing. That that machine is driven from here to the south of Spain, 90% of the time powered from the sun. What an incredible thing. Please do subscribe to the Fully Charged Show. Have a look at the Patreon link if you want to support us on that. We're very grateful for that. It's what keeps us going. Uh, being subscribed doesn't cost you anything, and it really helps us. And you can have a look at the YouTube membership stuff. We're doing a lot of stuff, extra stuff on Patreon and things like that. Uh, there's the, also the Fully Charged Plus channel, which is where we cover lots of other different topics, not just cars, all that sort of thing. And the live show that's coming to, Am to, coming to Amsterdam later this year in May. We're going to be having an amazing show right in the middle of Amsterdam at the Rye in Amsterdam in the middle of May. Check that out. It's all, all information about all our live shows and everything we're doing is on our webpage at fullycharged.show. But that's it. As always, if you have been, thank you for watching.
Well, thank you very much for watching that episode. Robert's just offset having his daily rub down. So while he's doing that, allow me to ask you to watch this episode down here. It's very similar to the one you watched. This episode is our most recent. Here is a link to subscribe to the channel. And this is a link to our Patreon. Bye.